When it comes to home theater, I have always preferred a speaker system that can provide clear dialogue and bring out every nuance and subtle detail from a movie. Now, will the Clips reference premiere Mark II deliver the goods? In this video, I'll share my honest thoughts and experience with this 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos system being powered by the Pioneer VSX LX505 9.2 channel AVR. Now, in a previous video, I provided details regarding each speaker as well as pricing. I'll have links to that entire system down in the description below, so be sure to check that out at the end of the video. Four years ago, I had the opportunity to review the original reference premiere series from Klipsch. Now, I was thoroughly impressed with this system, and to this day, it's the highest viewed video on my channel with over 1.1 million views. The reference premiere was a significant step up in performance and aesthetics from their entry-level Synergy series. The system provided amazing value and was more affordable than their flagship reference speaker system that included the RF7 version 3. Now, if you weren't aware, Clips bleeds black and copper. The reference premiere Mark II has plenty of it with their copper ceramic woofers, thin copper trim rings around each driver, and of course, the Klipsch logo. Now, I personally enjoy having my speakers naked, but for those of you who like a style that's more subdued, or maybe you wanna protect them from children or animals, you of course can always add speaker grills. Now, except for the subwoofers, the speakers themselves have magnetic grills that automatically align no matter how you place them. I truly wish every manufacturer would switch to magnetic grills as they make them much more convenient to add and remove without the fear of breaking off the grill pegs. The SPL120s do not have magnetic grills, but they're held on by plastic grill pegs. The frame of the grill is made of thick wood rather than thin plastic used for the other speaker grills. Now this is likely due to prevent the speaker grill from falling off during high excursion. The ebony vinyl finish does look classy and it blends with just about any decor. If you're looking to add a little color and maybe some contrast, the speakers also come in a walnut finish. Now, typically I review speaker systems here in my dedicated theater room, but since two thirds of you shared that you do not have a dedicated theater room, I wanted to try something a bit different. I wanted to see how they perform in a typical living room environment. Now to give you some perspective, my living room space is 23 feet wide by 15 feet deep and I have a 12 foot ceiling. Now this room opens up to the kitchen, my dining room, and also my breakfast nook. Like many of you, my living room does not have acoustic treatment and it does have quite a few hard surfaces. Unfortunately, I continue to get a big fat no from Jessica on adding acoustic treatment to our living room. Although adding acoustic treatments would further enhance their performance, I was thoroughly impressed with the overall impact of this setup. Over the years, clip speakers have been known for sounding bright and to some, even harsh. But over the years of personally owning over 50 Klipsch speakers, I myself have watched Klipsch make significant strides in refining the top end of their speakers. Now I'm happy to say the reference premiere Mark II is living proof of this. When listening to Hans Zimmer live at Prague, during the Pirates of the Caribbean, I never felt the speakers sounded harsh or even bright, and they still maintain great clarity and detail. The live concert was immersive as each instrument was distinct while providing great separation. Now the clip sound has never been described as laid back. I personally do not enjoy speakers that sound like they've got a thin blanket placed over them. The reference premiere Mark II have a forward an enveloping soundstage, which my ears prefer. In the 16 years that we've lived here in our home, this is actually the first multi-channel system that I've tried in my living room, as previously I've only had the RF7 version 3s in a two-channel setup. Now this is a pretty large space to fill, but having heard the original reference Premier system and due to the fact that their high sensitivity in their speakers, I had no doubts that they would have any problems filling this size room. During one of my favorite demos, 
Top Gun Maverick, the center channel anchored the dialogue with clarity and detail. The Pioneer did a great job steering the sound objects around my room when gunfire or missiles would come flying by the cockpit. Vocals and dialogue sounded natural and never difficult to understand. As with many clip speakers, they really tend to shine the closer you have them to reference volume. When Danger Zone kicked in at the beginning of the movie, guys, I just couldn't help myself. Although their dynamics allow them to be played at low volume, they just beg and at times dare you to see how hard you can push them. Now, I had a lot of fun turning them up and letting them rip. I found even at reference volume, the Pioneer 505 delivered enough power to the nine speakers without strain or struggle. Now initially, I was a bit concerned that the dual 12s in the SPL 120s would not be able to provide enough tactile response in my setup. But to my surprise, they were actually quite impressive. In the final attack scene in Top Gun Maverick, the SPL 120s had some pretty incredible excursion but they never sounded muddy or distorted. Now you guys know I love bass. I tend to prefer dual 15s or larger subwoofers for home theater because you can always turn them down and that provides even lower distortion as well as cleaner bass. Now if you're looking for subwoofers that have a small profile, pack a nice punch, and you're not trying to compromise the integrity of your walls, the SPL 120s might be a great fit for your setup. The only area I found them lacking was in the low end extension. I do wish the SPL 120s extended a little bit further than 24 Hertz as you tend to miss out on some of the infrasonics, those really, really low bass frequencies. But with that said, the bass was certainly impactful in my room and would be quite adequate for most living room setups. Now, because my living room has hardwood floors, I actually get some nice boundary gain and additional tactile response. The bass waves travel through my wooden planks and up into my couch, providing some really nice bass that I can feel literally throughout my body. Now, if you have a larger room or maybe you've got some concrete floors like I do here in my theater room, you might want to consider the larger SPL 150s or better yet, one of the new Clips Reference Premier subwoofers that they recently announced. Now these new subwoofers extend down to 15 Hertz and possibly even deeper when it's placed in your room due to room response and boundary gain. The new series does have a much higher price tag, but if you're seeking higher end performance and you love the sound of Clips, you definitely should give them a look. I'll have links to the new Reference Premier subwoofers at the end of this video and in the description down below. The RP600M bookshelf speakers served very well as surround speakers in this setup and they had no problem keeping up with the front sound stage. I prefer having direct radiating speakers for surrounds unless your rear wall is maybe right up against your couch, then you might want to consider the RP502 wide dispersion speakers. Now during my extensive listening sessions with this series, the only area that I wasn't super impressed with was the upfiring Atmos speakers. Now this doesn't come as much of a surprise since I've always recommended to you guys that whenever possible, go with in-ceiling, on-ceiling, or wall-mounted height speakers. Now upfiring Atmos speakers can work in specific environments, but there's just a lot of factors that must be just right for it to provide a truly immersive experience. I realize some of you, you may be renting, maybe you don't want to climb in your attic or even cut holes in your ceiling, and that is completely understandable. That's why upfiring speakers like the RP500SA were designed. Now because I have 12 foot ceilings, the sound needs to travel 24 feet before hitting my listening position. Now although Dirac Live accounts for this during calibration and it does increase the trim levels in the AVR, upfiring Atmos speakers didn't add the level of realism that I would have liked to experience. Now, if you have eight foot or maybe 10 foot ceilings and only a single row of seats, upfiring Atmos speakers can provide a pretty convincing sound from above. I just feel that you need to have realistic expectations if you choose to go down this route for your home theater. 
One thing that's really nice about the RP500SA Mark II is that it is versatile and has a keyhole bracket on the back that allows you to easily mount it on your side or rear walls. The RP8060FA have Atmos speakers built into the top of the cabinet with the edge of the tower surrounded by foam. Now this is a fantastic design as it helps you not to be able to hear the sound coming from the top of the speaker, but rather only the reflections off your ceiling. The RP500SA requires you to place them on top of maybe a bookshelf or a non-Atmos tower speaker. Now, as you can see here, the length of the RP500SA is quite a bit longer than the RP600M bookshelf speaker. So for those of you with OCD tendencies, you might find this a bit annoying. Overall, I have thoroughly enjoyed the reference Premier Mark II system. With a modern design, great dynamics, high sensitivity, making them easy to drive, and at a great price point, the Clips reference Premier Mark II is sure to bring a smile to home theater enthusiasts. Now I'd love to know what you're rocking in your home theater setup and whether or not this is something that you would consider for your home theater. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe because I make weekly content that I'm sure you'll enjoy. Have a great week. God bless, and I'll catch you in the next video.